Hey guys, my name is Elias and I'm a senior solutions architect and this job, just like any other, needs a reliable and comprehensive support system. I'm talking about tools and applications that help me achieve my goals effectively and efficiently. And my oh my, the tools I'm about to show you have been a lifesaver to say the least. To be honest, I don't know how my life would be without them, live alone my career. There are seven tools that I will be touching on in this series, and I will show you in details their advantages and how they help me execute my job, so you can see how they can help you execute your job as well. All right, the first episode goes to Xmind. For those who haven't heard about this tool, I can only say one thing. To me, this tool is a darling. Xmind is a mind mapping and a brainstorming software. This software can be used to capture ideas, to clarify thinking, manage complex information, and also promote team collaboration. Xmind supports various types of charts and diagrams, like mind maps, fishbone diagrams, tree diagrams, organizational charts, spreadsheets, and the list keeps growing. And so as a solutions architect, I use it more specifically for building non-functional requirements. You know exactly what I mean if you've watched this episode. If you haven't, let me tell you a little bit about it. We've explored many aspects of building a fully functional and easily maintainable solution like maturity, uh, availability, portability, security, and others. And we've put them together in a mind map that you can present to the various stakeholders you're working with while building the solution. Make sure to check it out for a real example of using the mind mapping feature in Xmind. I'll add the link in the YouTube description. Go ahead, I'll wait. As you've noticed, Xmind is designed to provide us solutions architects with a simple way to map ideas. It has both the idea management and idea mapping functionalities that give us an intuitive and cluttered interface among others. There are also easy to use templates available together with other mind mapping features. The second thing you've probably noticed is the various options on how to structure mind maps such as tree charts, organizational charts, charts and logic charts, right? So each chart can better represent different ideas, like how a matrix is a good option for comprehensive comparative analysis used for project management, how fishbone charts, on the other hand, are great for organizing and displaying causal relationships. And I'm not confined to choosing just one single chart, since I can utilize multiple of them, uh, even, you know, all of them if I want. With this, I have complete control over my ideas how to visualize them and how to process them and plan them and map them. Which brings me to the second feature I use Xmind for. Say I'm building a disaster recovery strategy for a company called Swimsuit Company. It's a fictional company, of course, but let's assume Swimsuit Company is a leading e-commerce platform specializing in selling swimsuits. It fully leverages AWS for its operations, given the nature of the business selling swimsuits. It is also safe to assume the company has a seasonal operational mode. It sells more swimsuits in summer and not that much during cold winter days. So let's see how we can build a seasonal disaster recovery strategy and portray it using Xmind. Because most industries are seasonal, like retail or construction or transportation, food industries, agriculture, all these industries are seasonal. And because they are, we can actually afford a higher RPO during the off season. So this is how it would look like for our company Swimsuit Company. It's January, right? It's the off season. The company deploys an active backup strategy, which means that it will be taking snapshots every 12 hours. So we'd have a fleet of EC2 instances that is separate, that is provisioned in a separate region, but it will remain completely shut down in the meantime, right? Until needed. We'll also have a backup S3 bucket that that is configured to use only one zone infrequent access. And because Swimsuit Company uses the pay-as-you-go model at AWS, then the cost of this idle infrastructure is actually negligible. This infrastructure will be costing peanuts. Now it's March 12th, and the company decides to hold a special sales event 
for two days, which means that the company is now expecting twice the regular traffic. What I would suggest to do is to dial in a lower RPO, taking snapshots every three hours rather than 12 hours that we have in the off season. This actually assures the company a disaster shall occur that it will only lose the last three hours of data. So this lower RPU can be used as well based on, you know, on the company's constraints. But once these two days of sale has passed, the RPU goes back to its normal events. We're selling swimsuits, it's from June to August, it's the summer season, this traffic is expected to be four times more than usual. So what Swimsuit does is it decides to up its disaster strategy from an active backup to actually a pilot light. What that means is, in addition to the regular snapshots that we were already taking before, the engineering teams choose a few core services like search service, payment service, and shipping service, and they created copies of them running in a parallel in a different region and configured them to sync with the main region every 15 minutes. In this case, if there is a disaster, an application load balancer that we could put in front will switch the traffic instantly to the disaster recovery region and only 15 minutes of data might be lost. That's worst case scenario, right? The backup H3 bucket, as we see here, is also configured to use the standard infrequent access policy. And after the summer season is gone, swimsuit company rolls back to business as usual, which means it rolls back to its low cost active backup strategy. And the last dates I wanted to add here to this diagram is about Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And as you know, those are important days in North America for the retail industry. So the engineering team might then, you know, choose to activate a pilot light, as we've seen before, or even go to a warm standby for the specific two days, making sure a scaled down version of the platform is up and running, ready to take over in case of an emergency. Then it will roll back to the standard active backup strategy right afterwards. Now you get the idea. This video is not about disaster recovery, so I'm gonna stop right here, but you see how the swimsuit company made important savings on its disaster recovery strategy without sacrificing its efficiency and ability to remain competitive during these challenging times. From an XMind point of view, you see how we were able to take this whole policy, this whole strategy, at least a high level overview of this strategy, put it on paper in a timeline. And then what I would do actually is I would print it and then I would put it in front of me. I would be able to actually include this in a PowerPoint presentation, right? And everyone would just have a look at it without being technical or whatever, and they would understand what we're doing right here. I would share it with developers. So everyone is aware of the timeline and everyone knows where we should be and what is expected of them coming these specific dates. There you have it. I hope this quick introduction to how I use XMind in my daily job was helpful. Please give the video a like if you think so, it's really appreciated. And the second tool that enables me to work efficiently as a solutions architect is Lucid Chart. When it comes to diagram illustration, nothing actually beats Lucid Chart. So I will be exploring it in the next episode of this series. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. All right guys, keep safe.